Dying would have been enough, but we would not have been justified. We would be forgiven. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. We would be saying, it is just like when you go to court, you come out, you serve, you, you, you're guilty, you serve your sentence. If it's a fine, you pay the fine. You know what they say? You've been, you, 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 you served your time. You get it? You're in prison 25 years, you served your time. Praise the Lord. But whenever you asked for the, for what is that to call? Certificate of conduct. What is it called? It always say, former convict. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you've, you've, you've ever served some time. So there, there, there are places where you may feel a bit inferior to speak. You get it? You are applying to join the forces. You want to join CID. You want to join... You can't join SEAL team. You can't join the Navy because you are a former convict. You get what I'm saying? So it's like your whole life is tainted forever. So if Jesus had died, we would be forgiven. They're like, they served their time, but they are former convicts. So every time the devil would be like, you, you hear bragging. You don't know that Jesus just, you were just forgiven the other day. So Jesus on the third day rose. And so that we may be justified. So that we, there is a new chapter. We've never done anything. There is no past. So even when the devil comes to look at your records, he says, this one, Deva, you are a fool. Okay, he knows he is. But this is a newborn baby. You get, you, have you ever been in hospital and somebody is born like, oh, this child. What time were they born? They were born at 2 p.m. today. Oh, four hours. Hey, they used to be a thief, a very dangerous thief. You see, you'll be admitted in that hospital. You'll be admitted in that hospital if they hear you talking like that. It will be a different word. They will just take you from this maternity ward and take you to another one. And that's how the devil seems foolish when he tries to accuse us. It's like you've not seen, this is a new creature. Who are you talking about? Don't you see their certificate? Justified. They never did it. Actually, you pay for accusing them falsely. Jesus was raised so that we be justified. Not just forgiven, not just pardoned, but that we are justified. And we begin a new slate. And we all have a new slate. Praise the Lord. And that life is a life that knows no limitations. That life is a life of reigning with him. That we that have received the abundant of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign by one, Christ Jesus. Ours is to reign in life. Come Corona, come SARS, come Ebola, come Cholera, come BBI, come BB what, whatever they come up with. We stay afloat because we know who we have believed and we know who is working in us. This is a life, a different life that we've been called to. Praise the Lord. This is very key. And I'm so glad that God has called us to show forth his healing power. I told you we are going to take so long dwelling on healing. So long on this because it is so necessary. It is something that whenever you see, whenever moves of God were killed, in many nations that took on religion and lost the, the move of the spirit, one of the first things they killed was healing. It is normally one of the first things. Praise the Lord. Right from sermons will stay, church order will stay, songs will stay, but no one talks about healing anymore in church. The devil has fought it so much because he knows how dear it is to God's heart. I have been told, oh, Jesus died. They've limited his death just to forgiveness of sin. Yet even when he, he came, he didn't say that. He came that you may have eternal life. Yeah, I've taught on eternal life. We have some videos on YouTube you should go and watch. But he came that we may have eternal life. What is this eternal life? It is not just being forgiven of sin. So people have limited his power to that. And it will be a shock when they get to heaven and See how much they missed while on earth. But you see, when you read the Bible, you realize that 
Most of the Bible is preparing us for life on earth, not life in heaven. So maybe God wants us to enjoy life here also. Because you see, that's how the, that's how the, you see, the truth is that the people who have done the greatest things for God, people who have been so, so powerfully used of God, are the people who are more minded of the life after here than the life here. Praise the Lord. And I don't, I don't, I don't discredit that at all. And it is so important. If you're not, if you're not, you see, eternity goes beyond us. So if you're not driven by eternity, then your Christian life is always going to be a mediocre life. It's always. But you see, once you have that, you have that perspective. Once you know that the life after here is way better than the life here, it is way better. It takes your life here to another level. Praise the Lord. No, some of us who have, I know some of us are here, who have had experiences, you've had experiences where you've visited heaven. You've, you've had encounters where you've seen heaven. If you were serious after such an encounter, your life on earth became a more victorious life. Because you see, you've seen your life, you've seen it is just like if you live here, then your dad starts running for presidency. You get it? He's on BBI and whatever is there that can take him to presidency for this nation. You know, you start living different. You start feeling like you're a target. You start... You look for a church with elevators. <laughs> you, see, you, you start changing. <laughs> you change your accent. You, you change the cologne. You stop using what? What, what is that cologne? That, <laughs> tell you. <laughs> yeah, so that deodorant is 100 shillings. So you stop using that one. If your dad is going to be... <laughs> to be, <laughs> to be <laughs> To be president, you're, you're not buying deodorant for a hundred shillings. Why? Because you've seen where you're going. Imagine we've seen where we are going. Our eyes have been opened. How are we going to live here? Large. 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 We are going to live in health. You see, we sing about, oh, there is no more suffering in heaven. There is no more. And yet, that, he said, imagine, the one who writes in Ecclesiastes, he, he he tells us how, how many men are ignorant. It is so true. They die like mere humans. Yet he says, he has set eternity in their hearts. He set eternity in their hearts. And that's why he says, guard your heart jealously for out of it flow issues of life. The boundaries of your life are set from your heart. So if eternity has been set in your heart, it is you to dispense it. It is you to create the world you want around you. It is you to create it. It is you to decide. I'm going to live at this level. Praise the Lord. And you see, you can. I decided to be happy. Praise the Lord. No one has ever found me, oh, this whole week, pastor has been just there, grumpy, complaining. No one has ever found me like that. Because I chose. I don't choose what the world throws at me. They can throw. But I choose how I respond. Eternity has been set in my heart. Praise the Lord. And I'll always be happy. I'll always be cheerful. I'll always be full of joy. No one owns the keys to my joy and my peace. Oh, can you imagine someone so say this about me? To hell with what they said. You see, that's a right place to use the, that phrase, to hell. To hell with whatever they said about me. Praise the Lord. They, I, I'm not going to give them that place. That's a very high place to give them. That I'm going to lose my joy because somebody talked. Do they know I'm a child of God? No, you are a child of God. Huh? So, oh, Jesus, you have the, you, 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 you have the spirit of Beelzebub. You're this, you're this. Imagine if Jesus used to sit with his disciples. Can you imagine? The people I loved once I came to die for, they called me a demon. 
Hey, Peter, if you don't know what it feels like, you are just a fisherman. Me was good. I came out. I was good. <laughs> now I'm being called a demon. And I came to die for them. They are ants. No. <laughs> eh? That is lowering yourself. Man, we are so special. Huh? Our sins forgiven. Put in right standing with the Father. We have a relationship with him. You see, even if things don't work here, you can go on vacation in your room. You see, there is a time, I've told you, there is a time I had this encounter with Jesus in 2015, 28th May. I had that encounter where he told me, you have me. Praise the Lord. And during this time, I think I'd gone to, to throw a pity party. Maybe that's the last time I threw a pity party. Hey, but why? How can these people, how can they just be talking this about me? How can they be doing this? How can they be doing this? Then I realized that with all that goes on around, you get it? Like people may talk bad about you. You may be fired from your job. This may happen. There may be a divorce. There may be this. But you see, you can retreat to your room. Yeah? Even if it's not in your room, you can just close your eyes wherever you are. And you go on vacation. And you have a blast. Better than the ones in Diani being stung by jellyfish and whatever. You yours, there is no jellyfish, there are no crocodiles to fear, there is no shark that will come. It is safe vacation. Safe. Smith Wigglesworth was interviewed. You don't, you take vacation, don't you take? And told them, give me 10 minutes. Rakabayaba, leko, shikaba. Says, I'm back, I'm from vacation. <laughs> Refreshed, relaxed. When you go there, you see, that's why I like the hymn. I, I sing that hymn here every time. And we walk. He walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Imagine, he walks with me. So when this world is just seeming to just, the, you, it wants to crush you, it wants to do this, just hold his hand and walk. Let him talk to you. Talk to you. Man, you'll come out of there just laughing at the world. They'll be wondering why you're smiling. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You see those superhero movies? Not even superheroes. But in anyway, movies make the guy, if you're, if you're not the villain, you become a superhero. Isn't it? You've watched even action movies and what. Those guys shoot in a way that no one can ever shoot. You get what I'm saying? He just dives and grabs pistols and he hits the target. You see, that's... <laughs> huh? Does that happen anywhere in the world? As in, a pistol is thrown to you and tsh, you hit the target. You know, why, why does the world create such movies? It is because eternity was set in their hearts. They are longing for the real life that is called us for. It is a life that reigns like that. Yeah? You've watched superhero movies. They, are, they create them a bit close to, 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 to the life that Jesus has for us. When I was in high school, many years ago, some of you are not born, many, many years ago. By the, the series I'm going to tell you, you will tell. You see, some of you will be like, <laughs> what's that? But there was a series called Smallville. Ah, you see? Even you're like, which name is that? What's that? Yes, it was there many years there were no smartphones then. And you see, this guy, Kent Clark, he has no earthly father. Yeah? You see, they are trying to imitate Jesus. And he's always saving the world. Because that is who we are. He's created us to always save the world. To always step in a hospital and people are crying, Oh, the doctor has said this. And I have come that you may have life. We, we are the ones. That's the life that we carry. So you see, so when you see that, when, when you look at most of these guys the, 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 in, in these action movies where there is disaster and what, you see bombs are exploding and what, the guy comes out running. Every bomb is exploding, but not where he is. They're just on the sides. They're just on the sides. You get it? They, they do all these things. Why? Because humanity has a longing for the supernatural. Because that is what God created us for. And you see, that is what sells. That is what appeals to people. 
Why? Because he's called us for such a life. When he says, testing the powers of the world to come, testing the powers of the age to come, it's possible for you to test the powers of the age to come while here. That is what he's called us for. And so at times when we are here and the power of God comes upon us, we get slain, we get in trances and what, we are testing. And we should be able to harness that, that it is our day-to-day life, that he is enough, he satisfies us, that our satisfaction comes from nowhere else. Once he redeemed us, made us one with him, the satisfaction that we have in him, and once we have that satisfaction in him, we start living like he created us to live. We start living that. We live. Look, look at how Jesus lived. As in some of these things were so normal to him. I told you, he, he comes in a room, it's good, the Bible says, we, that what? The, the room, no one opened him. The room had walls. No one opened the door. What? And he just shows up there and he said, peace. You see, it was very necessary. Jesus knew. Like even today, you as a child of God, you show up in a house and people have not opened. It's important that you start by saying, peace. <laughs> you, you, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, no one will listen to whatever you have to say. You declare peace. Once you do that, you declare peace. It's so necessary. <laughs> but you see, Jesus just goes on after that. It was so normal. He was showing them normal world. He's like, he doesn't have to explain to you, oh, you know this world, you know. No. Like Peter, cast the net the other side. And Peter catches fish. He casts, oh, master, the fig tree you cast has died. They are excited. Right. What did you expect? You said I cast it. What would happen? You get what I'm saying? That is what he's called us to. Even in healing, there are many excuses. You know, why many of us don't see healings, it is because we believe that there are reasons for people not to be healed. There is no reason for people not to be healed. And you see, I talked about some of those things, demystifying some of those things. People say, oh, you see, if you're righteous, you're, you're like this, God will heal you. You realize most of the people that Jesus healed were not even believers. Never do you see him tell anyone you will not be healed because of this. Even the ones he charged to live a certain way, it was after healing them. Go, see no more, lest our thing happens to you. It is after he had healed them. There is no excuse. We say, oh, you didn't have faith. Especially we charismatic people like blaming people for not having faith. There is no one Jesus blamed for not having faith. Even the one who said, oh, please help my unbelief. Still, his son got a miracle. And the same thing we see with the apostles. Even when Jesus spoke about faith, he only spoke about quality of faith. He spoke about great faith. He spoke about little faith. When Jesus spoke about faith, the quality of faith is how long faith endures. That is the quality of faith. When you got born again, you received faith. He says in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, he's dealt the measure of faith to each of us. That is, but he says he's dealt to us the measure of faith. Every believer has faith. You have faith. And he says, faith as little as a mustard seed. In other words, it was not about the size of the faith, the size of the seed. It was, it, it, the, 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 the main thing in that sentence is the quality of faith when he says, I've not seen such faith in Israel. And he's talking about this lady who came and he told her, I can't give bread of the children to dogs. The quality of faith many times is in persistence. That is the quality of faith. Until I see what the word of God says, by his stripes we were healed. I'm not changing my confession. Until I see that. That's, that, that's, what, that's what great faith, it, it is not that this person had big faith in their chest and they felt it that they have big faith that Jesus is like, oh, they have. No. It is Jesus tried, he tried to send this lady away. He did something that would offend many 50-year-old toddlers today. They would walk out of church. He told her, no, I can't give. This is bread for the, do- for the children. I can't give it to dogs. But she's a Gentile. The preacher. Imagine what the nation would write about you. The preacher just called a lady a dog. Uh, let's sit on the trend and discuss that. 
let's sit on Jeff Koinange live and discuss that. It would be being trending everywhere and the clip would be played everywhere. This lady didn't care. She said, even the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall off the table. And he said, this faith. Then you remember the lady that who this unrighteous judge was judging. And she persisted and Jesus said, will, I find, will the Son of Man find such faith when he comes on earth? And you see, it's the same thing that is written about the Hebrew boys. When you look at the story of the Hebrew boys, it doesn't seem to be a story of faith. Because, you know, faith, you would say, they would just say, our God shall surely deliver us. You see, we would say that's faith. But now they said, even if he does not deliver us, you know, you would say that's not faith. Because now they've said, even if he doesn't deliver us, that's not faith. But you see, they are written in Hebrews 11. They are written about in the whole of faith. Why? Because it was persistent. In other words, we're not going to change what we believe just because we've been burnt. That is great faith. And even the ones he talks about, Abraham, the ones after Abraham, the ones that saw the promise from afar, he says they died believing. He talks about them having great faith. They didn't receive the promise, but they saw from afar. They saw the promise from afar. And they died believing. In other words, they didn't change. So many times, that is what he calls great faith. That am I willing? Because you see, this is what the word of God says. By his stripes, I was healed. I believe it. I'll believe it until I see the full manifestation of it. I'll, believe, I'll see the full manifestation of it. And you see, that's why he says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. He's not talking about you being born again. Praise the Lord. He's talking about you being, we've talked about what salvation means. That you see, you are made righteous. You believe with the heart and you're made righteous. You believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So you being righteous has nothing to do with you, with you confessing. Even this confession prayer that we do, it's important. I'm not watering it down. But you know, it's not even 700 years old. You never see Paul say, now repeat this prayer after me. Even with the jailer. You see, when he brought him, oh, you and your family, you will be saved to done what? You don't see them going through a confession prayer. So it's not the confession prayer that makes you born again. It is you believing in your heart. But what you speak with your mouth is what propels you into salvation because you're uttering what you've received when you receive righteousness. It, it is, you see, you're confessing it and it affects your day-to-day -day life. Now that is salvation. So it says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. So in our faith, do we endure to the end? Praise the Lord. When, when, when there have been times where you didn't seem to, to receive that healing like instantaneously like you had wanted. Did your confession drop there? Now that's when he would say, you of little faith. Why did you die? That's what he told the disciples. That is why Peter, his faith failed. His faith became little once he stopped believing and he started sinking. When the storm, that, that is when it was little faith. It did not persist. It did not stick on with what it wanted. Faith stays on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, they are, they, I've been saying that during the week or different times, I want, I want us to just have many videos playing here, videos of healings and what, so that, you see, I find even many Christians who are so shocked when they see a miracle happen. They are so shocked, so shocked. We should not be shocked. We should be grateful. We should be excited. But you see, why are they so shocked? Because it is so foreign. Yet in the early church, it was not foreign. That's why he says that by the hands of Paul, he wrote, what does he say? Which word does he use? Special miracles. Yeah, he says special miracles. In other words, miracles were common. So now there were some special ones. Those that had not actually been seen so much. Praise the Lord. So now the ones that were not special during their days, today they are special. It is so sad. It is a falling away. If you see, moves of God have been characterized by great healings. It was so key. I've show, if you've not been attending, at least these, the, the last sessions are on YouTube. Go watch those videos that are showing us why healing is so key and so close to the heart of God. Why it is so pivotal. And you see, it is not separated from redemption wherever he talks about it. Right from the Old Testament. His first covenant name, when they came out of Egypt, in other words, redeemed, 
It is a type of our salvation. His first covenant name after they came out was I'm Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals your disease. That was his first covenant name that he gave to them. And you see, it went on. When David is saying, My, do not forget the benefits of the Lord, he says, who forgives your sins and heals your disease? He puts them together. Isaiah puts it together. He says, he bought our inf- he says by his stripes we are healed. And before he says by his stripes we are healed, in that same chapter, he says he took our pains and sicknesses. Other versions have made it sorrows and griefs. But from the original, it's pains and sicknesses. It shows us that it, it is there. It, it is emphasized. Peter comes and emphasizes it. Jesus comes and says, this daughter, is in she, she being a daughter of Abraham, she's, she also has a right to the blessing of Abraham. And it says, children of God, we claim that we are grafted into the commonwealth of Israel, which is the blessing of Abraham, but we kick away healing. And you see, we are so glad that all oh, medicine has improved these things. All oh, those guys, in, let me tell you, the devil is not going to change. His methods may change, but he's not going to change. And when Jesus came, one of the things that were bad on earth was sickness. It is one of the things that Jesus spent most of his time dealing with sickness, disease, setting people free. Praise the Lord. It has not changed. Every time we think that we've advanced so much, corona comes. Ebola comes. They are going to come with all our advancement. Almost every person in the cemetery. Yeah? One of the last people he saw as a doctor. Isn't it true? So, (laughs) the devil has not changed. Healing is still so relevant. And even if we are to just talk and say, just from your family. How many people have died and they died in hospital? That's how advanced we are. Why? Because it's, it's a spiritual thing. It's, it's more than a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. Praise the Lord. Thank God for our sea doctors who are anointed. You know, we, we, the, the people we have here are anointed. They, they know that we are not just dealing with... Because you, see, you can diagnose something accurately and still fail to combat it. But all the diagnosis was accurate, the prescriptions were accurate, and you don't know. Why? Because these are roots. It came from the fall of man. There is no sickness before the fall of man. So there is that root. And you know many people say, you want to get to the root, like, so what did you do? No, that's not the root. The root is the devil. You've heard that. So you see, we can't pray for your healing until we get to the root. Did your dad have it? Did your uncle have it? So it must be a generational curse. So you see, that's the root. You lied. That's a stem. The root is the devil. It all came from the devil. So you, you, you can get to all that, but you're not getting to the root. The root is the devil. And that's why you see that Jesus never went into all those things. Who gave it to you? Even when the disciples wanted to, who, who sinned that this man should be blind? He didn't go into that. He just dealt with it. I don't care whether it was a generational curse or not a generation. It came with witchcraft. What he told me is, go set them free. He said, lay hands on them and they will recover. He didn't say, go and discover how it came. Go and... No, no, no. He he didn't say that. Praise the Lord. Are there people doing funny things? Yes, there are people doing funny things. But you see, it's just like there are people making counterfeit money. So do we stop using money? Because, ah, me, I'm never going to use money. The people in Nairobi will make counterfeit money. That's what the church has said. Many of these pastors are just paying people and telling them to testify. So we give up on healing because of that. People are still suffering. Why does God heal people? Because he loves people. When you read Jesus healed them all, he, 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 because of compassion, he said he looked at them and he was moved with compassion. And he healed them all. So he healed them. because. And you see, it, you, you can't stay in healing for so long if yours is just... If, if it's just your ego, you can't start healing as a means. Just, I want to be the most known healing minister. I want. When you see people dying in your hands and what, <laughs> now you start caring about people. You forget about your ambition. Yesterday, I was telling my wife, we were watching a certain, we were watching a certain preacher interview. So they, they take care of children and what. And we were seeing certain children, and I was telling my wife, I prayed for twins like that. I remember being given twins. These twins were like five years old. 
but they were stunted. They stayed like their size of six months old baby. Skin wrinkled and they are like that. So they were five years. So I prayed for these twins. I prayed for them. I saw that the family, it was just a poor family, devastated. They've spent all the money. They've been taking them to a witch doctor all this time. I go pray for them. And what, a month later, two months later, here they are dead. Now you see such things. Th those are the times you decide, should I continue telling people God heals? Or he does not heal? Now that family, how do I face them? You see, you lose yourself. He healing is not, and, and like you've seen here, it is not a cool service. Some of these things, you're seeing Nathan Morris when they are praying for that lady, Delia Knox. You see, the service is, is you know, people are like, oh, now she's there. You see, she's not walking properly. You see, people don't want those things in their services. They want the service to be proper. If you've said she's healed, let her just walk. That's a good image. You see, as the more you go into healing, you forget about image and what? And you start loving people. You want to see the love of God minister to people. And we also see that people are ministering in a diff each person is ministering in a different way, which shows us, like from what my wife was preaching, uh, authority in your own skin. God has called all of us, but we're not going to minister the same way. Just like you have different personalities, even your way of ministering has a personality to it. So you see how Pastor Chris ministered is very different from the Ekari Black ministered is very different from the Pastor Robert Kanja ministered. But you see, we learn from all these people that are. So as you keep watching these things, your mind gets renewed. You see, there are many people who watch these things and like, do, when I was was I seven years or six years of age? Six years of age. My dad gave me How to Be Born Again, a book by T.L. Osborne, and it has photos of people getting healed. So I would read. So I would always run to my dad. I'm like, these things happen. You get it? Like I'm reading about this lady who was dying of HIV in Ghana. She's brought with a wheel on a wheelbarrow. And I'm like, she really got healed. So you see, as a young child, I'm asking, these things really happen? My dad is like, yes. And you see, he's been in a crusade, and a T.L. Osborne crusade, so he starts telling me the miracles. So you see, my mind is being renewed. Then I saw a few things happen in our home. I saw people who are possessed that used to be brought, and my dad prayed for them. There's a lady in our church who the baby, the baby was the, 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 the fetus turned uh, what? When the, the fetus the fetus was in a wrong position. I don't remember. They were in a wrong position and they said they have to operate her, remove the fetus because they are growing in a wrong position and my dad commanded that baby to turn in there. And when the lady went for the scan, the baby had turned. You see, I'm a young child and I'm seeing some of these things. So when I grew up now, get in church where these things are made trivial, they are laughed at. You're too much. Why don't you just work on how you speak and how you do this? I'm like these people. And, and I'm so glad that God uses everyone, but he's chosen the foolish things to confound the wise. Like I'm showing you like Pastor Robert Kayanja. Since I was young in Uganda, we hear of Pastor Robert Kayanja. Up to today, ministry has gone on. Who is Pastor Robert Kayanja? He was a high school dropout, form six dropout. We have many bishops with degrees, with PhDs and what? Is it that God doesn't use them? He uses them. Pastor Chris has PhDs. So, so it's, it's, it's true we are seeing all that. But God is showing you that, yeah, so maybe Pastor Robert Kanja didn't know a lot about ministry that many people knew. But God didn't refuse to love through him because he availed himself. And you are seeing all these big crusades he's doing in Hong Kong, all over these countries. He was in the Brownsville Revival. You see, we talk about it. How many African preachers were ministering there in the Brownsville Revival? A boy who was raised from Uganda, a school dropout, rejected by many pastors. He's there in Brownsville Revival. And he's the one who really brought the miraculous in the Brownsville Revival. You know, people like Daniel Colenda, these were the kids in Brownsville Revival. That's when the power of God touched their lives. Daniel Colenda, Eric Gilmore, all those people. That was, I think, 97, 95 it, it, Kill Patrick was the pastor there and it went on for long. So during that time revival was going on. Yongicho ministered there. Uh, many of these ministers you know around the world but most of them were ministering and it would be people would soak, the power of God would, would fall upon people but there was not really healing. Robert Kanja goes, he was recommended by T.L. Osborne. No one even knows him by that time. If you watch the whole sermon even they didn't even know how to mention his name. But I think they invited T.L. Osborne and he said, let him come. And then he had also ministered in Young Cho's church, so he also calls him. And he's there. And by the time you see this lady getting healed, this started, it was just in the middle of his sermon. People are just used to sermons. And him is like, 
He starts, this lady, her bone was fractured. She had, and he calls her out, the worship team, and many people got healed, and now miracles. So look at the people that he's influenced just because he said yes. He said yes to God. Praise the Lord. And like I told you, none of them, did we hear any of them ask any person if they are born again before they could minister healing to them? They didn't ask any person if they have faith before they could minister to them. Those are limitations we've set on ourselves. Let's pursue this so much that there is no reason. I believe, like it's been prophesied, it is in our day that we are going to see all being healed. That we hold a healing meeting in KCC and everyone that came gets out healed. Praise the Lord. Yeah, but there are many aspects we've seen here from what we've been learning. You've also seen this persistence. They are praying for Delanox. The first time she stood up and fell, they didn't just say, okay, now you can go. No, they persisted. And that's what I was saying. That's great faith. And you're seeing these people coming back with these, with these miracles. And so it, there is a way it stirs you. This is normal. Your heart starts crying for this. Many times I went, that Pastor Robert Kanja used to have miracle services on Wednesday. So many times I would go. I would leave. I was staying with my brother. So I would leave him and say, ah, I'm going. I'm going, to, I'm going for the miracle service. So I'm there at the miracle service. I didn't carry a sweat. I didn't carry anything. But you know, by the end, the miracles I've seen, I'm just speaking in tongues. I just call my brother and tell him, I'm not coming home. I'm just going to spend the whole night praying. Like it does something. I'm like, God, this is it. You see, you're looking at it and you're like, yeah, this is what you see in the Bible. This is what Peter did. This is what Paul did. This is what the disciples did. This is what Jesus did. This is what he told us to do. So why do we see fewer cases? It is because of what is propagated. Like I was telling us, when you're pioneering something, like when Paham was coming with this issue, even Ratsi when we began, most people that came didn't speak in tongues. You get what I'm saying? So in a service, we would pray, one person speaks in tongues. We, like the number kept growing, but slowly. But you see today, we just say anyone who has never spoken in tongues, don't go without speaking in tongues. And people speak in tongues every day. Why? Because we've made it so normal. You get it? So when we make it so normal, there is a spirit. There is like that common spirit that is here. So it's the same thing why we're not seeing a lot of healings in Kenya. But you see, when we persist in it and go on, show it, show it, show it, eventually mindsets are changed. People come expecting. Because you see, some of these people you're seeing, here in Kenya, they wouldn't go to a church. Your Christian friends would call you foolish. How do you go to church when you're in such a state? But you see, in these places, it has become so normal that even your friends who are unbelievers are the ones carrying you to church. They're like, with this condition, we better take you to church. Doctors will not do anything. We better take you to church. You're seeing Pastor Chris School of Healing. This is running every, actually it used to run three sessions every year. Now they are running one session. It's, they are running it in Johannesburg. How many people are being healed? Thousands of people every year. But people are like, why have we never had deep calls unto deep? You're going to realize that maybe when you came to Ratsi, you started seeing things you never knew. And now you realize they're all over the internet. There are preachers now you know that you're like, how didn't I know this preacher? It is because of what your heart was longing for is what you are seeing. So you see, when we surround ourselves with this, we start seeing like, how can it be this obvious? You get it? Because there are people I meet and you're like, are you sure? Some, I, I have, I've told you about my friend who is in the British Army. He's like, do you really believe that people get healed today? Isn't that weird? You, you, you can see that, re, that disconnect. You know, me, I'm wondering, does he live in this world? Like, you don't even need to be a Christian. You don't even need to go to church to see it. You just need to just go on YouTube. And then you even see people who criticize healing on YouTube. They're like, none of these miracles have been documented. And I'm like, where are they living? Are these guys living in the Stone Age? <laughs> ah, yeah, it's not documented. The very YouTube on which they are posting their video is the very YouTube they can see the documentation. They are there. Proof from doctors and what? They're like, no one has been... The rain had bonky video about the man being raised from the dead is there. Doctors what? Death certificate. The mortician is there interviewed. Everyone is there. And these are living human beings. These are not... They, they, they are not ghost people. They are people you can call. They are people you can go to. Like I'm saying, the testimony of this Dahlia Knox. She's been interviewed all over. It's not that she's... 
It's recorded. Accidents are recorded when they happen in U.S. Do it's documented by police what happens. Compensation is documented. How can somebody say, no, they don't happen today? It is because we as Christians have not propagated it enough. All we've propagated is motivational speaking. We should, we should, we should cease from that. Praise the Lord. We should give the world something that no one else can give them apart from those full of the Holy Ghost. That is what he's called us to do as children of God. Why does he anoint us? He doesn't anoint us to just come and tell people, oh, your business can grow big if you do this and this and this. It is so important. But you see, we are not short of people doing that. We are short of people doing this. And that is why it is so hard to fathom. It's so hard to believe. So hard for people to believe. When you propagate something over and over, just like when you propagate a lie over and over, people start believing the lie. And this time we are in people are believing lies more than they want to believe the truth. Because they've been propagated over and over and over and over until people can, no one thinks it is weird. You get what I'm saying? No one thinks it is weird for such things to happen. Healing must become so common that it is known in this nation that nothing is impossible before our God. He is our great God and he still loves people. Are you not tired of seeing your relatives suffer? Haven't you buried some people? Isn't it so painful to stand there indifferent? It is so painful. I used to feel bad. In Uganda they have a song they sing at funerals. It, it implies his work on earth is done. You get what I'm saying? And so I'm a young kid and I'm seeing, I'm young, I'm six years old. And I'm seeing a 14-year-old being buried and they are seeing that his work on earth is done. And it's bothering me. Why at 14? You see, I'm also calculating I'm 6. In a few years, I'm going to be 14. <laughs> yeah. As in, why should his work be done at 14? And you see, as I grew, I started searching in scriptures and there's nothing like that. There's no one God has created to die at 2. And you see, as Christians, we've come up with these excuses because they take responsibility out of us. They take off, off of us. Because you see, I have a church member who lost their baby. It would be easier on me if I tell people it was God's will. It would be easier on me. So we avoid pursuing God's ultimate because we want the easy way out. Sometimes he will heal, sometimes he will not heal. Why? Because we've seen some people not heal sometimes. But you see, the word, like I told us, believe the word. My, the last teaching was on what do we believe? It's the word. Believe the word. What does the word say? The next time we'll talk about that. But you're going to realize that Jesus healed them all. The theology is that. He heals. And Paul say, oh, sometimes he did not heal them. In his own city, he did not heal them all. This is what he says. If you're reading Mark, it's Mark 6, 8. He says, first of all, Matthew, Matthew 13, 8, the same account. Matthew 13, 8 says, they were offended, his city. They didn't love him. That's why he said the prophet is not of honor in his own place. They didn't love him. So maybe not even many showed up for his meeting. But you see, Mark, 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 Mark 6, 8, I think Mark 6, 8 says, except he laid his hands on a few and healed them. In other words, whoever he laid hands on, he healed them. If we are really following English, he says he laid hands on some and healed them. He doesn't say he laid hands on some and a few of them got healed. No, whoever he laid hands on got healed. And it's the same thing we see with the apostles. Whatever is recorded of them is that everyone, there is no one we see that Peter prayed for this one and eh, that one, it didn't work. He prayed for this one. So why do we preach that sometimes it's not going to happen? It is because it is our experience we are preaching. Why? Because it makes, it consoles us when we preach our experience. Let's stop preaching just our experience if it is not in line with the word of God. He said, go lay hands on them and they shall recover. He didn't put any other clause to that. He said, you lay hands on them, they shall recover. That is what we shall do. When we lay hands, what are we expecting? Recovery. That, that's the only outcome, he said. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pursue this thing like we pursued getting born again. Like though we believe that we are born again, let's know that healing is for today. Praise Jesus.
watch these things, go home, watch videos, watch these miracles, watch, watch and listen, learn from many of these people. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for all this that we've watched. Thank you, I believe that there is impartation, that something has been stirred in somebody.